Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 2nd, 2019. I am KE0VYC and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or ham radio. So we are going through this entire section, uh, kind of, I am reviewing or going through the uh, ARRL tech license uh, handbook. You can get it on Amazon and multiple other places. I'll make sure to include a link to the in the show notes so you can find it easily. <clears throat> While you can get it as a Kindle ebook, um, take it from experience, get the hard copy. It's at least, it, if you're like me anyway, it's so much nicer. I got to readjust my mic here. Sorry about that. So um, this next section, we are talking about radio signals and waves. So um, radio waves themselves are non-ionizing radiation. Radio, radiation, that's kind of, that's how, that's radio. It's radiating electromagnetic light waves from an antenna and then you have another antenna that receives these and vibrates at that same consistency to then be the receiver. <clears throat> so your FM radio in your car works this way. Your um, your Ham radios work this way. Your little walkie-talkies, your FRS radios work the same way. All radios work the same way. So, sorry, my volume is, seems weird for some reason. I'm not sure. <coughs> Hopefully it sounds okay in the end. So, um, as a, the opposing to that is ionizing radiation, which is normally your um, nuclear... Um, I want to, whatever that, I can't remember the core component of nuclear power, nuclear bombs, all that, that is ionizing radiation, which, uh, more, uh, not morphs, it's like, sorry, mutates your cells, non-ionizing does not mutate your cells, unfortunately, and we'll talk about that more down the road, it can cook your cells. Well, teaser? Uh, whatever. We'll get into that more later. The next part, and I should open my book to the correct spot. Um, they talk about phase and frequency. And I got to find my right spot here. So phase is used as a measure of time within the signal. Each cycle of a sine wave is divided into 360 degrees of phase. So the first quarter where it goes up, and you know, if you can kind of visualize a sine wave or a radio wave, when, as it goes up, that's the first 90 degrees. Then it goes down to hit that kind of zero mark. That is 180 degrees and then so on continuing through. And then there's different phases that you can have where they can be out of phase, in phase, and so on. Um, and then frequency is actually how long it takes for um, it to do one phase. <clears throat> so, for instance, your FM radio that's in your car is is in the very high frequency range. So if you're listening to 101.5, it's a 101 101.5 megahertz. So 
you can convert that into a wavelength. And well, let's do the math here real quick. I, let me just get my calculator up here. And uh, 300 divided by one, oh, oh, oops, 101.5 is, is about a three meter wavelength. So each full uh, uh, <laughs> phase is almost three meters long. Think about that for a second. So let's talk about the radio spectrum in general. Um, they, they typically start out at VLF, which is very low frequency. Um, I do think there is like a hand band in there somewhere. I don't remember off the top of my head. That, that typically starts um, at three kilohertz to 30 kilohertz. Um, and I do believe that is in the audio range as well. So I'm not sure exactly. They don't dive into too much detail on that. Um, then they start, then they that go into low frequency, which is 30 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz. Medium frequency, which is 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. Uh, your AM radio stations do fall into that range. Also, MF, uh, the medium frequencies where there are a couple ham bands, I do know those for sure. <clears throat> Most of your, and because of the range they usually just say is a quote HF radio, even though you're kind of in that medium frequency range, they kind of just kind of group in the HF. So HF is high frequency. That's where all the long distance uh, communications happen within ham radio bands. Uh, then we kind of go up to VHF, very high frequency, which is 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. That's where your TV, their VHF TV stations are. I'm not sure if there's much of that anymore. FM radio is definitely in that range. And because people are extremely creative, you have UHF, ultra high frequency. That's from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. Your UHF TV, like your HD TVs and so on, fall into that range along with some mobile phones, um, and typically anything that's over one gigahertz, they really consider that to be microwaves. Um, I'm not going to do the math on every single one of these frequencies. Um, and then, to keep, keep it consistent, they have super high frequency, which is 3 gigahertz to three, 30 gigahertz. And then you have extremely high frequency at 30 gigahertz and 300 gigahertz. <coughs> um, I do know there are several options of frequencies in the microwave range. I don't know what they all are off the top of my head, and most because I have no equipment that would do that anyway. So, <coughs> but. A lot of microwave stuff, you're using more of a dish type thing and you're communicating almost straight line to someone else. So there are contests for that. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to see how something like that worked. But I think it's pretty much you're going up on a, some sort of big hill. And I don't know if they randomly aim or if they're scheduling or what. I don't know. But it, that will get interesting. As opposed to most of the others at UHF and lower, which you have some sort of a um, radiation pattern that's usually much wider. <clears throat> Whether it's a full 360 or if it's more focused. Again, some of this stuff will come down the road. Um, the, the one thing I want to make sure you know about with this is how to calculate your wavelength. This is the one the one one of two formulas that really I needed to pass my tests. Um so th there is a formula to calculate wavelength and what is a wavelength? Well, a radio wave tra a radio wave moves at the speed of light or as as close as the speed of light you can within the atmosphere. Um so it's very close to 300 million meters per second. In ham radio, we do a lot of rounding. It's not always specifically 100%. So 
So because these railways are at a constant speed and through fun math stuff, what you can do is you can work out and have a formula that's 300, 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So like I did with that pre uh, that previous uh, one here where I, come on brain. There we go. So I took a 101.5 megahertz and I did 300 divided by that in order to get 2.955, which you can say is a three meter range, which is a, not a valid um, transmission because you'd be interfering with commercial radio, but you could listen to it. This, as I said, this is the formula I needed. Uh, it does cover it in the book, so you don't necessarily have to like re memorize it right now. But this is one of the most important things I needed in order to pass both my tech and general license tests. Um, the next part in with this first section is um, what is a transceiver? So you'll hear a lot about transceivers within ham radio. Well, there's three basic elements to any amateur radio station. You have a transmitter, a receiver, and an antenna. So normally you would join the tr transmitter and receiver into one unit, and you call that a transceiver. And then you connect that to your antenna. So your little handheld that I'm pointing to that you obviously can't see me point to is a transceiver with an antenna built in. It's all in one package. Um, you can get these bigger radios that are transceiver and you hook it up to antennas, whether it's, quote, externally outside your house or in a park, you just have it connected. So it, it sends and it receives. It is still one way at a time because it's a two-way radio, ultimately. Um, the the other part that the book kind of starts to talk about is a repeater and how what a repeater's function is. So a repeater is something that will receive on one frequency and transmit on another frequency at the same time. <clears throat> so they call that an offset. So I use my little handheld and I talk to someone. On, was it one four six dot two five zero? Let's just say, um, I am transmitting at one frequency and this is actually that would actually be the offset frequency is what they call it and then it's actually receiving at that 146.250 so usually they go based on the receiving and then the offset is the transmitting and the book kind of goes more in, uh down in the book further it talks more about the offsets and how that works but in the basic terms what it's really trying to teach you is that a um, a repeater, it, if you put it at a high point, so like the one in my, in my hometown is 250 feet high on a hill, <clears throat> you can get a very long distance range with that because radio is line of sight. So you have a high antenna with the uh, decent amount of power and you can make a lot of contacts at long range. Um I was talking to one of my uh wife's cousins who has uh a mobile radio which is about fifty um watts and he's able to hit was about forty or fifty miles away depending upon weather and so on. So just kind of give you an idea you it's not you know a little handheld, you might get uh, 10, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles, maybe. With more power, you can get a much longer range. And you most in most cases, the limitation is either A, power, not having enough power to get out that far, or B, it's just it can't find anyone to talk to. The repeater brings up, brings up your communication and drastically extends you the amount of area that you can talk to people because now you can be 10 miles from the repeater and talk to someone 30 miles away who happens to have enough power uh to to, to transmit um it's hard to explain because i don't know straight line distance but uh 
at the net last night. There was someone talking from Austin, Minnesota to Mankato, Minnesota. I do know by driving, it's an hour and a half drive. I don't know what straight line is on that one, but um, quite the distance that this person was talking. And I don't know what kind of intent he had, but it's just interesting to see how far someone can actually talk to you. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I'm not where I'm, oh crap, 15 minutes. I'm trying to keep these shorter and apparently there's a lot more information than I think there is. <clears throat> so do forgive me. Uh, I'm based on that. I'm probably all of them are going to be around that 10, 15 minute range. Sorry. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, again, this is from the ARRL. Uh, tech license handbook, and this was for section one. Was it one, two, section two? Come on, brain. Section two, two point one. <clears throat> so I will wrap it up here, and I will talk to you tomorrow. So in the meantime, seventy three. This is K E zero V Y C. The it, frequency is clear. The frequency is clear. W-X-0-M-I-K, 73.